Welcome your eights to this video on factorising. Um, hopefully by the end of this video you'll be able to explain to another person what factorising actually means. Not only that, you'll be able to see that there's a link between expanding, which is what we covered uh, a few lessons ago, and this new thing called factorising. And I also hope that you'll be able to accurately factorise. So you'll be able to do this process to an algebraic expression. And to do that, you, you'll need to be able to identify the highest common factor of the term. So I'm going to be using this term HCF, or highest common factor, a little bit in this video. So that's our learning intentions, those three. Um, how do you know that you're on the right track? Well, first of all, if you can identify the highest common factor of some terms in an expression, you're halfway there. The other thing um, that, that, you, that you'll know that you're doing the right thing is if you are including brackets in your answer because what we're going to find out is that factorising is going to introduce a bracket and that highest common factor that you identify, that's going to be written out the front of your expression. The hardest part probably is, is identifying the terms that are inside your bracket. So I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but the best thing about factorising is you can actually expand your answer. And you can expand it by multiplying uh, your number out the, out the front of the bracket by the terms inside. And you can check that you get the, the, the original expression that you started with. So it, like solving, there's a way of checking your answer. Factorising allows you to check your answer as well. So you can expand it to check that it's accurate. So that basically breaks down... Uh, factorizing into a few steps. So if you are struggling, I want you to come back to these success criteria and I want you to use them as a bit of a step-by-step -step process. What I'm going to do is first take you through what factorizing is. So I want you to recall back to when we did expanding. Here we have two lots of x plus 3 and you'll remember that when we expand this we do 2 times x and 2 times 3, or 2 times positive 3. And I've written that in this second line to remind you that when expanded, this becomes 2x plus 6. Now, in terms of what is factorising, factorising is actually the opposite process of expanding. So when we factorise, we actually start with an expression that doesn't have brackets. So as you can see, 2x plus 6. So we're starting with something... Uh, in this case, we've got two terms, and what we want to do is rewrite this so that it does have brackets. So why would we do this? The reason that we'll do it, uh, well, there's lots of reasons in fact. Some of the reasons later down the track in your mathematics journey might be to help with graphing, so it might be to help with finding um, something called a, an x-intercept. Um, lots of other reasons. We need to be able to identify when two expressions are the same. So we can do that by factorising to see if two things are the same. What we need to do, and I just want to get my little toolbox open. What we need to do whenever we factorise is first have a look at our two terms. For us to be able to factorise, we want to be able to take out a common factor. So whilst we're starting with 2x plus 6, I'm just going to write down on the side here what we are going to do when we factorise. So we will rewrite the expression. So that it's equal, obviously. We don't want to, when we say rewrite, I don't want to change the expression's value. I just want to rewrite it in another way. Rewrite the expression with brackets or with a bracket. When we're just doing simple cases like this, there'll just be one bracket, but you're going to do some factorising in, in year nine when you actually have two. We'll rewrite the expression with brackets, and I might just put that in a bracket there. Okay, so, um, and the reason we're going to do this is because the terms have a common factor. Because the terms share a common factor. And 
that's where our HCF comes into play because I mentioned HCF before, which means highest common factor. So what I mean is there's actually a factor in 2x. If I want to list the factors of 2x, there's not many of them. Factors. So I'm just going to write two little lists. I've got 2x and I've got 6. So the factors of 2, so what multiplies to give you 2x? Well, obviously 2 and x, because they're the only two things that are being multiplied together here. Uh, technically, we also have a factor of 1, since 1 times 2x will give us 2x. The factors of 6, well, we've got 1 and we've got 6. We've also got 2 and 3, since 2 3s are 6. So the reason I've done this is that when I want to factorise, what I'll do is I'll look for the highest common factor in these two terms, in 2x and in 6. So if you have a look here, my highest common factor is 2. And what that means is that because 2 is a factor of both of these terms, I can take that out the front of my bracket that I'm going to introduce. So I've written this as a little template so you can see what we, basically a structure that we're going to work with when we factorise. Um, we, we don't always have these little boxes here, but when we're starting off, I think it's best to have it there. We worked out that our highest common factor of the two terms is 2, so I'm going to put that out the front. The next thing we need to decide is what do we multiply by 2, so we're going to do this bit now, 2 times something will give us 2x. Well, that must have been x, since 2x is 2 times x. The next thing would be this second part of expanding asks me to do 2 times a number, and that's got to give me 6 up here. So that number there has to be 3. So as you can see, if I start with 2x plus 6, factorised, so introducing a bracket, taking out that highest common factor is 2x plus 3. So I actually start with the expression and I finish with something with a bracket. And if we have a look up the top, you can see here 2x plus 3 is what we started with when we expanded. So it is the direct opposite um, in terms of a process. What I'm going to do now is show you a few examples, nice and easy to start off with, and that is that we've got some boxes to fill in, and this, what these examples here actually already have, get a nice colour to draw in here, but these, these boxes already have our bracket set up for us, it's got a plus or a minus set up for us as well. And we also have the highest common factor, which is sitting out the front here. Generally, when factorising, we're going to have to work out what that number is. But just until we're warmed up a little bit, I think we'll have it given. Okay, so the first one, let's have a look. We're going to factorise 2x plus 12. We're told that 2 must be the highest common factor. So let's fill in what must be in the brackets. So our final answer needs to be 2x when we expand it, uh, if we were to expand it. So 2 times something gives me 2x. That must be x. And 2 times something has to give me 12. So that must be 6, since 2 6s are 12. So factorise 2x plus 12 becomes 2 bracket x plus 6 bracket. If you're understanding so far, you might like to pause here and try these three. If you're still not, not quite sure, have a look at what I do here. So I'm told highest common factor is 3. So that's the highest common factor of 9a and of 15. So I need to decide, what do I multiply? So I'm going to multiply 3 times something will give me 9a. Well, 3 threes are 9. So that's got to be a 3 there. But it's not 9, it's 9a. So I need to also include a. Next thing is 3 times this number. So 3 times something will give me 15, which is my second term. 
and we know, whoops, we know that three fives are 15. So factorized, 9a plus 15 becomes three lots of 3a plus 5. This one you'll see has got subtraction, and so we have that inside the bracket as well. Highest common factor is 5, we're told. So 5 times what gives me 15b? Well, 5 threes are 15, so it must be 3b. 5 by what will give me this negative 25? Well, 5 fives are 25. So factorised, 15b take 25 must be 5 lots of 3b. Yes, that will give me 15b. 5 lots of taking away 5 will be taking away 25. So that matches what I was given to start off with. The last one in this format, we've got a highest common factor of 8. So 8 times what will give me 16c? Well, 8 times 2 is 16, so it must be 2c. I need this to say take away 8 when it's expanded. So 8 times what will give me 8? Well, that will be 8 times 1. Notice I've got take away 1 here and I've got take away 8. So 8 times take away 1 or minus 1 will give me taking away 8 or negative 8. So as you can see, these ones were, I guess, uh, scaffolded a little bit for us. Because the highest common factor, selecting that, that's another part of factorising that we need to be able to do. Oops, I've lost my 6 up there. Wasn't ready for that one actually, so I'll just move across. Here's my other examples. Okay, so when we don't have a scaffold, so we don't have the highest common factor done for us, we need to work out what it is. So if we have a look here, we're looking at the 8G, 8G and the 4, and we're working out what's the highest common factor of those two. Now, if you wanted, of course, you could do this. You could look at the factors side by side, factors of this one, 8, 1, and G, factors of this one, 2, 4, oops, I've forgotten, 2 and 4 of that one, uh, and 1. And so my highest common factor, my highest factor that is in both is 4. I don't tend to do that because I can look at this and I go, well, 4 is a factor of 8, so the highest common factor has to be 4, since 4 will not have any factors greater than 4. That's another way to look at it. Okay, so once we establish that 4 is our highest common factor, what we do is we place the 4 out the front and we create our bracket. Then we decide 4 times what, so this number here, 4 times what will give me 8G. Well, 4 twos are 8, but I need 8G, so I add the G in there as well. 4 times something will give me positive 4. That's 4 times 1, or 4 times positive 1, so this should say plus 1. And there we go, it is now factorised. So as you can see, we can do it in one line. With the next one, again, we're looking for highest common factor. So highest, if we think about factors of 14, well, we've got 14, we've got 1, we've got um, two lots of 7, and of course, x is a factor as well. In terms of 21, we've got... Um, three sevens, uh, or we've got one lot of 21. So we can see here that our highest common factor must be this one, seven. We put that out the front and work out what's missing in here. So seven lots of something must give me 14x. Well, seven twos are 14, and I need the x. 7 times something will give me negative 21, so it needs to be a minus, since I'm getting a minus up here. So 7 threes are 21. And there we have it. That is now factorised. Second last one now, you'll see this one's got a negative out the front, so we're going to be careful with that. 
Um, I'm not going to write the, the factors out this time because again, I'm looking at this number here. This is 9 and 9 is a factor of 18. So the HCF then has to be 9. If I take that out the front and put my brackets in, now what I want to do is go 9 times something gives me negative 18D. Well, first of all, 9 times a negative number will give me a negative up here, so I know it has to be negative. Next, uh, 9 times 2 is 18, but I don't want minus 18, I want minus 18D, so I need to include D in this first term. Next thing that I'll do is uh, I notice that I need to do 9 times something will give me positive 9. Well, that means 9 times 1. So that means it must say plus 1. Just a note about this, that this can be written another way. It can be written as 1 minus 2D. I wanted to show you that just in case, say you're practicing this later and you think that you might have got the answer wrong because it's written the other way. It's not wrong. It's just we tend to, um, I guess it's convention, it's normal um, to switch these around so we've got our positive number first. It's not wrong, though, to leave it like that. So if you're more comfortable, you can just leave it. So that's our factorised answer. I'll just put that equal, equal. And the last one I'm going to do is a special one because it's both, uh, both terms are negative. So we've got a negative here and a negative over here. Let's first work out our highest common factor. We've got negative 30p. I'm just going to ignore the negatives for now and I've got negative 24 but just consider it maybe in terms of just 30p and uh, oops I've done the wrong one just in terms of 30p and the tw positive 24. So negatives won't matter uh, while we're looking for the highest common factor. Okay so factors of 30 we've got 1, we've got 30, we've got 2, 15, um, what else have we got? We've got 3 and 10, so lots of factors for this one. We've got 5 and 6. Uh, 24, we've got 1, 24, 2 and 12. We've got 3 and 8. We've got 4 and we've got 6. Okay, uh, obviously P is a factor as well. Not that that's going to matter here, but it's good to keep that in mind that the pronumeral can also be a factor. Okay, so um, I was just trying to change my colour. Oh, it's over here. Highest common factor, we have 6, 6. Now, some of you might have been able to recognise that without the list, which is what we want to aim for eventually. Uh, however, if you do need to write yourself a list, best to do so. Okay, so we worked it out, it was 6. Now, I'm going to show you without, I'm going to show you two methods to this. We'll just take the 6 out for now. And I've got 6 times something is going to give me negative 30. Well, it's got to be negative if I'm going to get a negative answer. And 6 fives are 30. But I don't want negative 30. I want negative 30 P. So I put the P here. 6 times something will give me negative 24. Well, 6 fours are 24 but I need it to be negative, so like this, take away 4. So that is now factorised. Now the only problem is we tend to, if you've got both of these terms negative, we tend to actually take the negative out as well. So I mean we include the negative out the front like this because what you'll see is inside the bracket we'll actually get a, a positive terms, which looks a lot nicer. So this can also be done by taking the negative out the front, which means negative 6 times positive 5p will give me negative 30. And negative 6 by positive 4 will give me negative 24. So notice that what's inside the bracket in this bottom one looks a lot nicer than the one above. And it's simply because we've taken the negative out the front as part of our common factor. So if you're feeling confident with this, I want you to aim to do this second part. If you're not feeling confident, let's just stick with how, the, how I did it the first way. And that's just by looking for that highest common factor and taking that out. 
Now for most of you, um, the video is going to stop here because you're ready now to try uh, some of the, the practice for factorizing. If you're feeling confident, I want you to continue with the video because I'm going to show you some more challenging uh, questions. And that's this slide just here. I mentioned before that pro numerals can be factors as well. So notice when I was showing you um, the highest common factor, uh, or when I was trying to find the highest common factor, I was actually writing the pro numeral, so X or B or whatever it was. I was writing that as a factor because we don't know what it is, but we know it's being multiplied. So we know that it is a factor. So what we're going to do now is we're going to factorize this one here, 2X plus 4XY. So obviously I can see that a 2 goes into both of these terms. So that's one of my, well, part of my highest common factor. But what I also notice is X is in both of these terms. So that means that both of these terms share X as a factor as well. So not only is 2 a factor, but X is also a factor, which means that 2 times X must be a factor. And that means that 2X is actually our highest common factor. Because 2 alone would need to be smaller than x, so it needs to be taken out of the bracket. 2x times what gives me 2x? 2x times 1. And 2x times what will give me 4y? Well, I'll deal with the number to start off with. It's two 2's that will give me 4. And I want it to say 4xy. When I multiply this, I'm only going to get 4x. So I also need a Y in here as well. So as a checking process, I could expand this. 2X times 1 is 2X. 2X times 2Y is 4XY. So that's expanded. That's my check that I've done it correctly. So as you can see, we can take out anything, any pronumals that are common to both terms. You're, they're going to come out and they're going to be uh, part of your, or your HCF, part of your, your highest common factor. Just a few examples to show you. Uh, if I look at these two terms here, I've got six and I don't have, well, I've only got a number one here. So obviously the, the highest common factor in terms of the numbers is just one. But I don't write one because we tend not to do that with algebra. We just cancels, well not cancels out, but it's sort of, sort of like an invisible one. What else is in common? I've got A in common. This B here, I've got a B, I've actually got two Bs over here because it's B squared. That's B times B. So one of these Bs is also in common. So what I'll do is I'll take out what is common, and that's A, and one of the Bs that are in each expression is also in common. I need to multiply AB by something to get 6AB squared. Well, obviously I'll need to multiply it by 6 so that I get this 6 coefficient. I've already got an A in my, my HCF out the front, so if I can't put another A here, that will give me A squared. So no A's need to go here, but I've only got one B and I need it to be B times B. So I need another B here. So now when I do this, this is AB times 6B will give me 6AB squared, which is what I want. The next thing I need is AB times something will give me negative AB. Well, it needs to be negative. And since I've already got AB out the front, I'm simply multiplying it by 1. So it should say take away 1. As you can see, they're getting a little trickier now. Just to the second last one, first of all, I'm going to look at the numbers and see what is my highest common factor of 3 and 12. Well, 3 goes into both of them. The next thing I'll do is have a look at what pronumerals are in common. I've got x squared here, and I also have x squared there. So x squared is part of the highest common factor. Then I'll open up the bracket. 3x squared times something will give me 3x squared. Well, that's exactly the same, so it's times by 1. 3 times something will give me 12. So this needs to say plus 4. So the 3 by 4 will give me that 12 up there. 
But 3x squared by 4 will only give me 12x squared, and I want it to say 12x squared y. So I need a y in this second term here. Now if I was to expand that out, I'd get 3x squared plus 12x squared y, and that's what I need up there. Last one. First of all, have a look at your numbers. I've got 5 and 10, so highest common factor of them will be 5. The next thing is to look at your pronumerals. I've got a and I've got a squared. So only one of the a's is in common since this one doesn't have a squared. I've got b and I've got b, but only one of the b's is in common because this has got one of them, there's an invisible one, and that one's got two, so just one is in common. And then I've got C and I've got C. So both of them have the C. Okay, so I've got 5ABC and I need 10ABC. So I need to times this by 2. The next thing I see is it's got minus 5 and this is positive. So then I need a minus down there. In terms of since this is 5 and I need a 5, it's going to have a 1 there. But we don't write a 1, we leave that out. So what else is missing? I've got a, b, c, but this is a squared, b squared, c. So I don't need any c's. I've already got one here and I need one in the answer. But I need another a since it needs to go from a to a squared. And I need another b because it needs to go from b to b squared. And there we have it. If we were unsure whether our solution was right, whether our factorised form was right, again, we would, we would just expand. So 5 by 2, ABC will give me 10, ABC. And 5 by negative AB, so this will make this negative. A times A is A squared, B times B is B squared and C. And so as you can see, we've finished off when we've expanded it expanded to see the same as our result. That is just a checking process. That can usually be done to the side, so don't just put that straight under your answer because then you haven't actually demonstrated which is your answer. So I'm going to take it away because my answer should be this bit right here. I'll stop there because um, we'll need some time to practice. Um, but like I said, these are the more challenging ones, so we should only be trying these if we're feeling pretty confident with our factorising.